Before we um, ask the guest speaker to come up, I just thought I should give you a quick update on my journey of three years to the eventual position of district governor. When we went to the changeover on Sunday, that completed my first year. So I was inducted as district governor-elect, which is this pin here. And Amy's father, Tony Heading, he was formally inducted as the district governor nominee. So we're having a wonderful journey together and I'm sure Noel will test how busy a role it is in that lead up and not a great deal of spare time and this year's going to be worse than last year I believe. So Noel? Oh. Yes. <laughs> so it's really good for the club and um, and as I said in the beginning, as the journey goes along I do need your support. Now we have great pleasure in asking Tony to come forward to introduce our guest speaker, Tim Sharp. Morning everybody. Morning. How are we this morning? Cold. Everybody looking forward to the Crusaders whipping the Reds on Saturday? Thanks so much. Uh, Phil, it was probably my fault, I forgot to tell you that it was over here, so I'll take that one. And just with that, you know, the money we raised from that, I just want to point out a couple of figures. The money we raised from that, okay, we turned over about 24, 25 grand and we made about a little bit over 10 grand. But the difference between doing 10 grand and making 10 grand and making 20 grand for the, for the four days, is a few more people in the weather, and that's all it is. Okay, so if you could organise that next year, Phil, that'd be fantastic. <laughs> okay, and Sandra forgot to bring the bio that I um, emailed through to her this morning, so the sergeant can find find her for that. Okay, so I'll add a little bit. Okay, probably about three months ago, I was working working in the book room. It's a long time customer who comes down every couple of three weeks. A guy called, a guy called John Weymouth came down and we were talking about Rotary. He was looking, asking some questions about it, and I was just talking about guest speaker. We just had Sally Thibault was was the speaker that that week and talking a little bit about autism and you know helping people and he he said to me and gave me Judy's phone number on the spot he goes if you get a guest speaker you've got to get these guys to come along and it's Tim and Judy Sharp. Tim's an artist, it's a uh, character called Laserbeak Man and without going on any further Judy and Tim and she'll tell you their story. <laughs> Hello everyone, I am Tim, I'm a world famous artist, I am 23, I'm now friends of Kate Blanchard. Yeah. 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 Uh, Tim doesn't like microphones, and um, so in case you didn't hear, he said he's 23 and he's a world famous artist, and he's best friends with Kate Blanchard. So, um, we'd like to thank you very, very much for the invitation to be here, we're thrilled to be here this morning, thank you for the lovely breakfast, and I hope you're not disappointed, but I do most of the talking. <laughs> so um, it, well, this is a great story we've got to tell. Tim is a journey of great hope and um, we hope we spread the message of ability. Uh, the day, uh, Tim's 23 years old now. The day he was born was the happiest day of my life. I've never ever seen anything so beautiful and perfect and I was just an absolute joy but unfortunately Tim didn't feel the same way about me. <laughs> From the very beginning there was quite obviously a lot of problems. Uh, he was a very unsettled, very, very unhappy baby who never slept and had trouble with just about everything. Uh, we kept going to the doctor. Um, they said there was nothing wrong with him. He was developing well physic physically and they said basically it was my problem. We kept going to the doctor. I kept going to the doctor back and back and back and back and they said that they wouldn't do anything until he was three. Um, he, he was not talking. He only had about one word which was really just a sound and I, I didn't know what it was. Um, he didn't play the way other children did. He was upset with everything. Certain sounds just about drove him crazy. Um, he, I, he jumped through a fly screen window once to get away from the sound of a fan. For you and I, the sound of a fan is absolutely nothing but they terrified Tim. So the appointment was made for the day after his third birthday. We went to what was, we were told was one of the best paediatric specialists in Brisbane. He turned out to be the cruelest, um, heartless, awful man that I think I've ever met in my life. And he told me, he diagnosed Tim with autism and told me that at that stage that Tim would never talk, never go to school, 
never learn anything and the best thing that I could do would be to put him away and forget about him. Um, he said that Tim felt nothing for me. By the time we got to the car I was absolutely hysterical as you can imagine. But I was trying to put him in his seat and Tim's patting my back and wiping away the tears. I wanted to march back inside and say to that man, you tell me that child feels nothing for me. So that began our journey. Um, as a mother, I was desperate to talk to Tim, to communicate with him. I knew he had a voice because I heard it all the time with his crying and his distress, but I just tried to need to find a way that we could talk backwards and forwards. Uh, pointing wasn't any good, signing wasn't any good. There just didn't seem to be anything that I could do. And then I tried um, drawing. Now, I'm not an artist. I can just draw stick figures. But I used to do stick figures to show him what we were going to do in a day and, you know, describe different situations in life for him. And Tim took to that. He quite liked it. And he would sit, it was the one time he would sit and he would just watch and watch and watch and watch. And slowly he just started to develop speech. Uh, within a month he went from zero words to a hundred words. Um, it took a while and then Tim started to draw. And his first drawings, they weren't cast or anything, but they were just really cute. There was a certain little bit of style about them. And then as he got um, a bit older, he started to draw more and more and more. And like most little boys of his age, he just loves superheroes. Who do you like, Tim? I like Spider-Man, Batman, Superman, X-Men, Captain America, Thor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got the picture. Tim loves superheroes. <laughs> so when, when about at the age of 11, he started walking around the house saying, when I grow up, I'm going to be laser big man. And I just said, good for you, Tim. You know, I'm going to encourage him. Whatever he wants to do, he can do. So he started drawing, I thought, oh, I'd better have a look at this. And I had a look at Laser Beakman, I thought, oh, he is just so cute. And so Tim invented his own superhero. He just wanted one that was his own that would do what he would do. Um, we were on our own, didn't have much money, had to go to a birthday party, so we made our own birthday card with Laser Beakman on the front. What did Laser Beakman say, Tim? Have a filthy, disgusting birthday. Yeah. <laughs> so we gave it to our friends. They liked it and showed it to someone else who said, who was a, a director of an arts group that helped people with disabilities and said, this is a, you know, a, a really good thing. Maybe you should do something more. I had no idea what we would do. Meantime, Tim keeps drawing. Well, he's laser big man character and he develops his own personality and it's quite obvious that he's not like other superheroes who goes around and you know, bashes and bangs and all the rest of it. He's a guy that looks at life and has a funny interpretation of it and it also brought out some of Tim's autistic um, the, the tendencies of autism to look at things in a very literal way. Uh, sometimes if you say to a person with autism, go and jump in the shower, they'll go and jump in the shower. Uh, if you say to them, what have you got on today? I'm going to say, well, I've come here to do a talk and then I'm going to go home and do a bit of work, work on the computer. A person with autism, you say to them, what have you got on today? Uh, Jeans, black t-shirt and a jacket. It can be a very literal, and that comes out in Tim's drawing. At the time, Tim was diagnosed with uh, autism they were diagnosing one in a hundred children with it. Today, it's down to one in four children. It's an epidemic. Um, it's got a higher rate than the incidence of child cancer or any of the other childhood diseases. The main character, autism affects every aspect of life, um, but the main characteristics that it affects are the areas of communication and the ability to socially interact. To me, that is the cruelest thing that can happen to you, to rob someone of the ability to interact with others. That's why we're all here this morning. For the, that's what the essence of human life is all about. The, the way we can, you know, even if we're down to one person, that ability to be able to do that, to express our wishes, to express our needs. Um, to small children with autism don't have the ability to play. That's another very cruel thing to me, to see small children that just don't know how to do it. It affects all areas of the sensory system. Uh, the touch, taste, eating different foods can be very difficult. Smells, uh, I mentioned about sand, uh, sounds. Tim was terrified of fans. Um, it didn't even have to be loud sounds. Even as a baby, in a baby caption with the Velcro, when you did that, he would physically jump. The, the noise of that was so extreme. Some people with autism explain the sound of snow falling as similar to bricks being thrown through a, brick, a, a glass wall. So in every part of your life, you're having to deal with enormous challenges. You know, it's like going to another planet where they speak another language and there's a different set of rules. It affects absolutely every part. But Tim began his journey in a very difficult way and started to work his way through. And art was a, a major contributor to making a huge difference to Tim's life. When Tim was 15, we got a package in the mail. 
don't know who it was from, and it was for some entry forms to the VSA Arts Festival in Washington, D.C. So I thought, oh, this is a bad 